Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Paul Peregrine here at Foursquare. Stay tuned as my good friend Dr. Dan walks us through a series of videos on Redneck Movie Night. Dr. Dan's lit these all with speed lights and a Foursquare softbox. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Dan. We're here over at uh, Foursquare Studios and we're going to show you how to build a Hollywood flat. Okay, so let's go over the materials that you'll need uh, to build your flat. Uh, we chose materials that are very inexpensive and you can get at pretty much any home improvement store. Uh, we're using one by three boards. Uh, we are also going to use drywall screws that are very inexpensive, some glue, and we have two boards that are eight feet long. We have three for cross pieces that are 46 and a half inches wide or long, if you will. And if you notice, we're also going to use a jig here. Uh, it's going to be very easy to line this up and so that the walls are nice and square. It's necessary to keep them nice and square so that when you stack them or line them up together across for a set, it looks like a real wall. And this is what I have here. I have a wood jig. It allows me to clamp two pieces of corners together so that they're nice and tight. So when I drill the pilot holes and actually screw it in, it keeps things tight. I do it by myself. I build a lot of these. Uh, you can get this particular item at like a cabinetry store. They run about $40, $45. I've seen at the home improvement stores something a little bit cheaper, but because I do so many, I like something a little bit more robust. Let's put our corners together now. Uh, basically, I've loosened this up, so now we'll show you how to get them nice and tight. Uh, I use a little bead of glue here first. So you don't have to go overboard with the glue, just a little bit, otherwise you got a big mess to clean up. I'm gonna line this up here and tighten this down. This is my third hand. Okay, now I like to check it just to make sure. I'm just kind of anal about that, compulsive, make sure we got them nice and tight, and we do. Okay, now you wanna do your pilot holes for your screws. And you just need to line it up. And then I'll put in the second hole. Okay, take your drywall screws. You don't have to do it real tight, you just want it snug together. If you do it too tight, you'll split the wood and you have to start all over again. Then the second. There, just like that. Now it comes to the bracing and giving strength to the corners. Uh, we've done three of them already and now I want to show you the technique that I use to make it really easy without having to get a tape measure each and every time. Uh, using the same wood that we use for our frame, you cut 45 degree angle for a corner so you can get it flush. I use a second piece of wood to put it in the middle so that when we go to actually use these on set, we can actually put a C-clamp here. Invariably, if you put it here, you always want a C-clamp to get a tight corner. It's always in the way. Or if you decide to have the wood at the end and you don't want to use a wood veneer but canvas, the canvas many times can show this seam because by the time you paint it, it'll shrink um, and show up an edge which you don't want. So I put it in the middle, take a pencil, mark it off here and here, here and here. Once I have marked the inside brace, I just use two thicknesses of a block of wood, some scrap that you, that you will invariably have, put it here and line it up to about where the screws need to attach to the inner piece. You make your line here, you make your next line right here, and now I know exactly where this middle piece is going to be without having to measure it. Next I'll take the uh, wood glue and again just put a little bit, does, oh let's open this up, that always helps. I just put a little bead of glue down the middle here. Ooh, see, see, that's what happens when you don't clean up after yourself. So you put a little bit here, a little bit there, and you're good to go. Place it again on that second block of wood just like I did before. Okay, now 
I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes, making sure that this is flush against the inside of the wood, exactly where we had it before, where we need to have it. Okay, once you have your pilot holes, just line things up and screw it in. Make sure that it goes below the surface of your wood so that when you actually tighten the flats with a C-clamp, you have one stacked in a row, these won't get in the way and you'll have a nice tight seam. Now we're going to put on the top. Oh, Janine, can you give me a hand here, please? Thanks. Thank you. Oop, there we go. Thank you, Janine. I appreciate it. You're a star. Okay, now when we put the top on, we just want to make sure that things really square up. And because we're using wood that is not furniture grade, uh, you want to start with the, the wood that is the straightest and use that as your bottom. Okay, so that when you set things on the floor, set the bottom on the floor, it's a flat surface. Okay, uh, now to fasten it down, you can use hammer and finishing nails or brads. I have a pneumatic um, air gun, so I'm going to use that. I do quite a few of these, so it just makes things speed along a little bit easier. Don't forget your ear protection and your eyes. Okay. And as you do this, because the wood isn't always square uh, or the, you're going to get little bows in it, that's what I'm doing with my thumb. I'm just kind of pressing things down. There we go. Gene, can you give me a hand here? I need to get this little flush. Hey, thank you. Yeah, push that in. Now watch the blow black here. You have to keep your face. There you go. Good. Push real hard, real tight. Good. Oh, you're a gem. Now we've just finished building our Hollywood flat. 